I've previously described this sand spike. Very versatile as an antenna support, especially if you're at the beach. You just screw it in like that, your pole fits in there and it holds it vertically. If you want to go portable at short notice and don't have time to order one of these, then you could use a piece of conduit like this, about 30, maybe 40 centimeters long. The pole just fits inside it. Then I have this T piece here as a sort of a hammer. And as a bonus, you may or may not need this. I've got an old TV antenna element. If I put that in like that, that provides a more snug fit between the fishing pole and the conduit. Another benefit is if you stick this in the sand like that, then the element might give you a little bit of extra stability since being thinner, it's easier to push deeper in. A benefit of this is that it is much slimmer than this. So depending on your bag and how much room you've got, that may be beneficial. That's all in theory in my backyard. Let's go down to the beach and see how all this works in practice. My antenna will be about five meters of wire. That is a half wavelength on 28 megahertz, so it will be quite efficient there. On 14 megahertz, about a quarter wavelength. In between on 15 meters, it will be around three eighths of a wavelength. Again, should be okay, especially as I've got an antenna coupler with me. It will be very, very inefficient on 7 megahertz. I wouldn't be expecting results there. But on 10 megahertz, it's about 3 16th of a wavelength, which is about the lower amount you can get a vertical to be reasonably efficient. At least that's been my experience. Around 70% of full size, in this case 70% of a quarter wavelength, uh, puts you about in the region. So on 10 megahertz, an antenna like this would still produce some results. As for the counterpoise, you can see in my bag the ground mat that I've featured in previous videos. Well, there's almost no wind, so I think this will be okay. I don't know if I even need this TV antenna element. The benefit of having it though is that it provides a bit of snugness for my mast. Although you could use other methods like even stuffing in a handkerchief. Just on 18 megahertz and completed a contact with VK2SG. In case you're wondering, I'm using the FT8CN Android app. That just needs a simple cable into an SSB transceiver with Vox and that can allow transmission and reception of FT8. So far we've had one VK2 and two into Indonesia. First two on 17 meters, most recent on 15. So that's our PVC pipe antenna mount. Crude, but it works. Maybe not so good if it's windy, but for a quick little trip down to the beach when it's not too windy, it's pretty light, it's portable, you probably have the parts lying around the house doing nothing, 
so it's something that I'd suggest. As for the contacts I got today, all on FT8, eight of them in total, all on either 15 meters or 17 meters. Often it's better to have an average antenna on several bands, maybe three, four, five or more bands than a really good antenna on a single band because the conditions might just not be right for that single band. And if you're struggling to make your 10 contacts, very often you'll be able to make the contacts, repeat them on a band like, if you can work them on 15 meters, you might be able to work them on 17 meters, which of course requires an antenna, or at least an antenna coupler that will work for you. Back home and a quick look at where my signal was detected. This is 10 megahertz, no contacts there. I wasn't on there for very long. 14 megahertz across the US and a little bit of North Africa, but again, I wasn't on for long and no contacts. 17 meters, I was on there for quite a long time and detected a lot in the US but no contacts uh, quite a few contacts China Japan so 17 meters was very successful 15 meters looks pretty similar again uh, north south contacts um, predominated though my signal was also detected in the US and Brazil uh, 12 meters Again, I wasn't on for long. I didn't have contacts, but my signal did cross the Pacific and also up north to China and Japan. And this is 10 meters, pretty much uh, north-south, a fairly concentrated spread of stations. Do you want to get the most from your portable QRP operating? Good antennas is a great place to start. Find out how I succeed with my two books hand-carried QRP antennas, and more hand-carried QRP antennas. They're big sellers with favourable reviews from all around the world. To learn more, visit vk3ye.com or search the titles on Amazon.